Now on BBC Scotland, Des Clark is joined by some of Scotland's funniest folk, nice and new, with some strong language. It's breaking the news. This is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. With me, as always, are four wonderful panellists. On my right, we have Neil Delamere and Martel Maxwell, and facing them are Josie Long and Christopher MacArthur Boyd. In the news this week, Scottish GP Poonam Krishan became the fifth star to be eliminated from this year's Strictly Come Dancing. There has been contention in the results, though, as every time viewers tried to put a call through to the doctor, they were made to speak to a receptionist first. <laughs> China has declared success as its youngest ever astronauts are being launched into space. <laughs> Many child psychology experts have responded by saying that this should be a last resort and maybe try the naughty step first. <laughs> And a Falkirk football club is flying high, fueled by the addition of Buckfast to their half-time pies. Camelin Juniors are now top of the East of Scotland League's first division, although the fans are none the wiser, as they're too busy doing a conga in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've met the teams. Let's crack on with round one. <laughs> This is the Broken News Round, where our teams have to guess two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Neil and Martel, can you tell me what this is all about? So, Keir Starmer yesterday warned the Chancellor... ..that they have a choice between freedom or chaos. Speaking at the same place, Donald Trump told his supporters to march on the Capitol in 2021... Rachel Reeves has told voters... This sounds grim. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does, actually. Uh, Neil, what are you thinking? Any ideas what our first story might be? Is it about the budget, Des? What? Well, now, where did you get that from? <laughs> the, the notes that you sent for us to research. All right, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Neil, that's the right answer, of course, as well done. Yes, Labour have given their first budget in 14 years, with Chancellor Rachel Reeves being the first female ever to do so. Headlines from the budget include tax rises worth £40 billion, and an extra £3.4 billion for Scotland in devolution payment. The Chancellor increased passenger duty on private jets by 50%. In other news, Rishi Sunak was recently seen painting EasyJet on the side of his plane. <laughs> <laughs> Pure coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Neil, well done on the right answer there. So, overall, what did you make of the budget? Um, well, to summarise, they haven't increased VAT or income tax. Um, if you've paid loads of money uh, as a pensioner in tax over the years, there's no guarantee that you're going to get that money back because in, win in terms of winter fuel allowance, because that's going to be means tested. Uh, there's no guarantee that this will all work to generate growth. Uh, but the idea is that for everybody, for poor people, for rich people, for white people, for black people, eventually the real cost of living will come down in the next few years. So to summarise, uh, no income tax, no VAT, no money back. <laughs> Back, <laughs> no guarantee. <laughs> Black or white, rich or poor, we'll cut prices out of straw. There you go. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, then, Josie, initial thoughts on the budget? Uh, you guys might not know me, but uh, politically, I would say I was very much on the left. And uh, up until this point, I've been like a very, very outspoken critic of Keir Starmer uh, and Rachel Reeves especially. Um, but listening to this budget, I was actually really impressed. Not really, I'm joking. I hate them. I think they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the worst. I will tell you, it, it's one of these things where uh, they've extended the cut on fuel duty, right? That's only 5p off fuel duty. That raises £3 billion. At the same time, they are r raising bus fares in England to £3, the cap, from £2, right? Affecting people who've got the least, right? She's not raising fuel duty, right? She's not investing in rail, and she's making bus fares higher. If she did raise the fuel duty, she'd make £3.1 billion. That is the cost of every single bus journey in the UK. Right? She's making political choices to favour things that are bad for the environment, right? And I know what you're thinking. Well, the bus cap, that doesn't count in Glasgow. That wouldn't affect us. No, it wouldn't affect us because the buses never fucking come in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher MacArthur Boyd, make sense of this budget, please. 
I, d I don't know. <laughs> Is the right answer. Well done. There was good bits and there was bad bits. Like, there was a bit where they were like, uh, oh, we're going to take um, one pence off every bear. <laughs> and I, no, don't you hear that? That's, that's rubbish. <laughs> that means uh, for every 650 pence you would get by, you would get one free. <laughs> Honestly, that's not a good deal. <laughs> you never see that in Tesco. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, Martel? Do we have to accept that times are going to get tougher before they get better? Yes, but not in this way. You can raise £40 billion pounds and do anything. They're taking it from us. The most tax rate for, raised for over half a century. So you can do anything. It's a bit like saying I've won a million on the lottery, I'm going to upgrade my house. Well, yes, of course you can. And of course you can fix the NHS or improve it. But will they? That's the question. I think what they should do is look at the companies who are making huge profits, like 100 million or 10 million, and shave something off that rather than take it off the small business. I was just thinking, if you could go just a little bit further to the left, it could be um, Homes Under the Hammer and Sickle. And I really think that that <laughs> could be a program that I'd be interested in watching during the day. You get what you're given. <laughs> Uh, yes, well done and get the right answer. We are talking about Labour's first budget in 14 years. Yes, according to Chancellor Rachel Reeves, Scotland will receive an additional £3.4 billion in Treasury funding as a result of the UK budget, which is just enough to cover a peak time return train to Edinburgh. <laughs> well done, Neil and Martel. You get two points for that. That was Labour's first budget in 14 years. Over to you now, Josie and Christopher. What was the other story we were asking for? <laughs> So Keir Starmer yesterday warned the Chancellor... ..that they have a choice between freedom or chaos. Speaking at the same place, Donald Trump told his supporters to march on the Capitol in 2021... Rachel Reeves has told voters... This sounds grim. Yeah, I, I mean, we can all feel it looming on the horizon. It's the final run-up to the American election. Um, and what a time to be alive. <laughs> I can hear the joy in your voice. <laughs> we are now in the final week of the US election race, with Americans going to the voting booths on the 5th of November. Both national and swing state polling are showing that the result could be incredibly close. A comedian speaking at Donald Trump's rally in New York called the US territory of Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Trump's campaign has said that the comment does not reflect his views, adding, I didn't even know it was an island. <laughs> Martel, am I right in saying you have you met Donald Trump? <gasps> I have met Donald Trump. Did you sell him a house? People will find it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> but people will find it astonishing because you really want to know what he's really like. Like, is he different from this? And the answer is, well, you can judge. I was a journalist for many years. I was at Dress to Kilt fashion show in New York, which part of Scotland Week. And Donald Trump comes in, and it was way before he was president, way, way before he was president. But he was still a big deal in New York, like a huge deal in New York. So I chatted to him. He was so engaged. Eyes, proper contact, and just really engaged. Got a couple of good bits from him, good lines could use. And then a Victoria's Secret model wearing just brown pants walked past. She got floated past. His jaw fell open like this, like a cartoon character, you know, with the, with the eyes popping out. And he just looked at her and he walked slowly off. And I was like, oh, OK, bye. <laughs> and that was it. So, yes, he is exactly as you think. <laughs> <laughs> Few days to go until America elects a new president. What are your thoughts? Uh, the coverage is been now beginning to get to me because I have been reading the Washington Post, the New York Times. I've listened to every single podcast on the subject. I've listened to podcasts from the UK, from the US, from Europe. I've followed all the polls. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'm going to save you some time now. I'm going to summarise all of it. I'm not even going to use language, right? <laughs> this is how you summarise it. <laughs> 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 Christopher MacArthur Boyd, let's just say you are the political advisor. You're going to sort out, you're going to speak to the presidential candidates what advice is getting them across the line. Just give it your all. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard out there for everybody and... <laughs> just give it your best shot. <laughs> just... Yes, a mum on school sports day. <laughs> Keep your chin up and keep your spoon on with an egg in it and get over the line, guys, and... Give it lulled. Stay hydrated. 
<laughs> uh, well, there we go. Well done for giving us the right answer. We're, of course, talking about the closing days and the closing moments of the US presidential race. Uh, singer Beyonce is the latest superstar entertainer to endorse Kamala Harris's bid to become the next US president, although voters should know that if you like it, then putting a ring in it will spoil your ballot paper. <laughs> there it is. Well done, Josie and Christopher. You get two points for that. It was the mashup of Labour's first budget in government and the continued US election campaign. And at the end of that round, well done. The team are all square! <laughs> now, much of the news is about public opinion, so to find out what stories people are talking about, we spoke to two friends of the show, journalist and broadcaster Afia Hagen and STV newsman John Mackay. So, first of all, what do you think Afia is on about here? I love that young people are embracing this as self-care. For me, it's just a chance to have some quiet, right? Being able to do it without, like, a child pawing at you or somebody climbing in your lap, it's just so nice. Is it dining alone? <laughs> <laughs> I get the feeling you'd have given that as the answer to any question. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the feeling we've heard the title of his autobiography. <laughs> A study this week has found that the stigma around going out for dinner alone has shifted and attitudes to solo dining have changed since the pandemic with an increase of 14%. Dining solo is becoming more popular amongst millennials and Gen Z. Other activities also becoming more socially acceptable to do on your own, like going to the theatre, the cinema, or being a Scottish Lib Dem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was in Tokyo recently, right? Um, and they have a place there called Ishiran Ramen, and it's designed for dining alone. They take you, there's no tables, everybody gets their own private booth. You don't need to speak to a waiter, you fill out a wee form saying uh, this type of broth, this type of noodle, do you want some gyoza? And then uh, there's a wee tap, and you just press a button, and water comes out for your wee cup. And, uh, Behind the booth, a little bamboo curtain comes up and they just slide you your food, no eye contact. It was, I... it was a dream come true. <laughs> I, I was at a show like that in Soho years ago. <laughs> uh, Josie, jumping off the back of that, what about you then? Are you someone that likes to dine out alone? Yeah, I love it. I think as comedians, we do it a lot. You know, you're in a city, it, it feels exciting. And for me, I think it is a little bit more about interplay with other people because you know, I, I don't have much mystery. Whereas if I'm dining out alone, I just like to read my little book and I'm not saying anything. People looking at me thinking, oh, who is she? Is she French? Protect, you know? And then I also like to add a little bit of drama to it, so I like to pretend that I'm waiting for someone. Who's she waiting for? Hmm, a lover? Hmm. And then, obviously, by the time the food comes out, I like to pretend I've been stood up. Oh. Get to show the other guests my range, you know? <laughs> Devastated, looking at my watch, but why mouthing? But why? You know? There's a heartbreaking bit when you dine alone where the waiter takes away the other cutlery. Oh, yes! <laughs> and it's like all hope is gone, do you know what I mean? Like... Anything else in life you think could be improved by doing it on your own, Neil? Having a shower. Stop having films where the wife is in the shower and the husband gets into the shower and uh, uh, the, the husband takes a bottle off the shelf and he foams up his fingers and he lathers the back of her neck and her shoulder blades and in between her and her lower back and she turns around and kisses him and turns into a sex scene. Stop doing that. <laughs> That doesn't happen in real life. If you're married 10, 12 years, what happens is your wife's in the shower, husband gets into the shower, takes a bottle off the shelf, foams up his fingers, he lathers the back of her neck and in between her shoulder blades and her lower back. She turns around and she whispers, that's my face wash. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you rubbing my face wash on my back? Do I have an extra face in between my shoulder blades that I was previously unaware of? I'm sure what difference does it make? It's 100 pounds a bottle. 100 pounds a bottle! <laughs> what is it, cleansing your soul? Shut up, it's got retinol and the stem cells of a badger in it. Shut up! Agree with the showers. Who, after 10 years of marriage, has a joint shower no. or, or bath? Um, my cats follow me to the toilet a lot these days. Anyone else have that with cats? Yeah, but I do shit in their litter. <laughs> Yes, studies have found that solo habits with eating and going out by yourself are on the rise. Solo diners consider eating out alone to be a form of self-care, which means that eating crisps in your pants on the sofa is basically meditation. 
<laughs> right, over to you, Neil and Martell. It's your turn now. What do you think John is talking about here? This isn't something I've ever done, but I have been in a city bus tour, and when we come up to a particular area, the guide said, that area on the right, that's been ruined by the likes of you. They should make it that you can only get there by Calmac. That's how they sorted out the problem in Tobermory. Was this the story that a lot of people are set jetting? So a new phrase to cover people who go to film sets and TV sets, and it's causing problems sometimes. But it's also quite exciting and can bring quite a lot of money in. Yes, it is the news that a North London street has been encouraging a certain type of tourist known as set jetters. The street featured in the film Paddington and movie tourists have been flocking to visit the fictional home of the Brown family. What do you think about it, Neil? Do you approve of this new phenomenon, the so-called set jetting? Yeah, my, my uncle absolutely loved uh, Porridge, the sitcom. Absolutely loved it, religiously. <laughs> and uh, St Albans Prison was used for that. And he visited that for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martel, if you could go to an immersive holiday for any film, what would it be and why? Oh, um, Heat. You know, with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro? Yes. yes. No? Yeah. That yeah, glass, yeah. the glass fronted house on the water and just being in America and just somewhere amazing. Well, there's some murders in that. Yeah, it brings down the value, it's very affordable. <laughs> Christopher MacArthur, boy, if you could go on a immersive holiday to any film, you've got your choice, what would the film be and why? I was in Tunisia and I went to the river that they filmed Bridge of the River Kwai on. Do you know that film where it's like... Yeah. What is his name again? Humphrey Bogart and he's on the boat and they go down the river. That's African Queen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What is Bridge of the River Kwai? Is That's it even called Bridge of the River Kwai? Is it Bridge over the River Kwai? That's uh, Ali Canis and Prisoners of War in Burma. But so I went close. to the river they filmed close. African Queen on, right? <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you walking around like, this is just like Bridge over the River Kwai? This is amazing. No, How did near Kwai? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realise that Catherine Hepburn was in the British Army. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe. <laughs> We are now being told we're going to have to fact-check everything <laughs> Christopher is saying in this show. <laughs> yes, the rise of set jetting is the correct answer. Two points go to Neil and Martel. <laughs> this is Breaking the News from BBC Scotland with me, Des Clark. Now, this round is all about who's in the news, so I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Neil and Martel, you're up first this time. Who is this? The industry now is based on ownership. He could have his own network right now. He has so many people following him, so why would you want to sell yourself short and be a slave for society when you could be the master? That is Snoop Dogg, isn't it? Yes, that is the correct answer, Neil. Snoop Dogg is in the news this week, and it said it would be crazy not to consider investing in Celtic after seeing Ryan Reynolds hit the headlines with his takeover at Welsh football club Wrexham. The multi-millionaire rapper has been pictured in Celtic shirts over the last two decades and wore the kit at his gig in Glasgow's Hydro last year. Apparently, Snoop Dogg is interested in meeting the Celtic ground staff as he's heard that they look after the grass. <laughs> 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 what a story this is, Neil. Well done in giving yeah. us the right answer. Snoop Dogg, is he wise to invest his money in Scottish football then? Oh, can you imagine the world, the hypothetical world that Snoop Dogg would buy Celtic in? Snoop Dogg would buy Celtic, 50 Cent would buy Rangers, and uh, not the rapper, 50 Cent would buy Rangers. <laughs> 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 what do you think then, Josie, about Snoop Dogg and his investment in Scottish football? Is this a wise investment for him? I mean, I really don't know much about Scottish football and I'm English um, and I don't really feel like I have a right to comment. But what I will say is that he doesn't have, and I can't really explain why I know this, he doesn't have Rangers energy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I feel like I've lost the crowd, but I know I'm right. Who Jay has Rangers? Jay-Z. Jay Jay-Z's got Rangers energy. That's exactly what I was trying to think. Who would Jay buy Rangers? Yeah. And I thought ah. it would be Jay-Z. 99 problems in a pitch is actually one of them. 
I've literally got that written down right there. Yeah. Lovely. Neil, what else in Scotland do you think deserves some celebrity investment? OK, this is controversial, but there is one thing that I am absolutely positive Ireland does better than Scotland's, OK? Hear me out on this. I once got into a taxi in, in America and I was sharing with a Colombian guy. And I said, what, where are you from? And he goes, Colombia. I said, oh, oh, that's Colombia, Valderrama and Shakira and Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I'd love to go to Colombia once. And he said, where are you from? And I said, Ireland. And he went, ah, oh, I love your butter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not James Joyce, or you 2 or Pono, or Oscar Wilde. I love your butter! And I just looked at him and he went, it's addictive! And I thought, surely not the most addictive thing a fella from Colombia has ever come across. <laughs> no one has ever smuggled a pound of Kerry gold up their bottom through customs. Even though it would slide right up there when you think about it, right? And I think that is the one thing that we do even better than anywhere else in the world. So, somebody should throw a few bob in two some of your dairy products over here. Martel, you're used to speaking to celebrities and have done throughout the years. So what else in Scotland do you think deserves that celebrity investment? Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> Dundee's looking great. It is. I mean, it's had a billion investment. v &A, if you've not been recently. We used to be the poor relation. Now everyone's like, Dundee's nice when they come and see it. But actually, DFC, Dundee Football Club. Unlike Wrexham, we got ourselves up but would like to stay there. And we are more of an underdog. I think that he should choose someone a wee bit more left field, like Dundee. I think Dundee's a wee bit like Las Vegas just now, where it's like there's that main strip where you got the Malmé Zone and you've got the V&A and it goes up towards, you know, uh, Caird Hall. It's lovely, but then you go back a street and you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> there's a road called the Nethergate and it looks like it. It looks like a portal to hell. It's absolutely... <laughs> Uh, well done for getting the right answer. We're talking about Snoop Dogg and potential investment in Scottish football. The rapper says that he'd love to get more involved in Scottish culture, but draws the line at changing his name to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> right, Josie and Christopher, it's your turn now. Who is this and why are they in the news? I think the most important thing about interviewing is, is to actually establish a relationship with the person in the office, because after all, it's a totally phony operation, all this nonsense around, you know, palava. I read about this, it's a horrible thing. It's a guy who's invented this robot that pretends to be Michael Parkinson. That is the right answer, yes. An AI-replicated Sir Michael Parkinson is set to host a new podcast featuring a series of completely unscripted interviews with celebrities. The eight-part show will use AI technology to synthetically recreate the late presenter's voice and interview style, drawing from a back catalogue of over 2,000 of his interviews. Now, some people saying it's a bit weird. What do you think? Yes, yes, it's too weird. Let the man die. <laughs> it's so wrong. And I was thinking about, like, what the interviews are going to sound strange you know like how's he gonna how's he gonna explain his existence they'll be like welcome to parkinson's interview podcast i'm dead <laughs> well i never know peace i was 88 that's a good innings help me i scream at night <laughs> and it comes out in a chain of numbers <laughs> I beg them. I say, please don't leave me in this shadow realm. Help me. <laughs> also, I hear you've got a book out. What's that line? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael Parkinson asked the best questions in TV history. But, Martel, what is the best question that you've ever been asked? Don't know if it's the best. Quite rude, though. It was a journalist who asked me, if you have children, are you not worried that they too will be ginger? <laughs> <laughs> and they were! Yay. And we love it! Neil, what's the best question that you've ever been asked? I think my favourite ever one was a drunk guy standing beside me at a urinal in a pub, uh, absolutely buckled, looked at me and went, have you ever put on your tracks with bottoms back to front and realised how big your arse is? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, an AI recreation of Michael Parkinson is to host a new podcast proving that not even death can stop a white man getting a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well done, yes, an AI Michael Parkinson is, of course, the right answer. Two points go to Josie and Christopher. <laughs> And it's time now for our final quick-fire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I will read out a headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. 
a floating island of garbage. Oh, there you go. That's uh, President Joe Biden there talking about a bad day that he had in Millport. <laughs> Fingers on your buzzers. Here we go. More than a quarter of us have done what in the kitchen, Josie? Is it put a rat on your head, get it to pull your hair and see if it makes you a better cook? <laughs> Lovely, specific, brilliant, not correct. More than a quarter of us have done what in the kitchen? Martel. Wondered if you should take down the partition wall to create an open plan living <laughs> Possibly get the patio doors and just make it all bright. <laughs> Bonus point to you as well. Yay. That'll increase your yield. Uh, more than a quarter of us have done what in the kitchen? Christopher. Is it ran a tap and it hits the inside of a spoon and then it comes up and hits you? <laughs> that happens to me all the time and I hate it. Weirdly, Christopher MacArthur Boyd is frighteningly close yes. to the answer. To the point where a bonus point may be awarded, but let's see if we get there exactly. More than a quarter of us have done what in the kitchen? Neil. Peed in the sink. <laughs> Because there was someone in the back. What? No, me neither. I've... No. <laughs> no, who do that? That's silly, isn't it? <laughs> Not quite what's in the news in the past seven days. More than a quarter of us have done what in the kitchen? And the answer is that more than a quarter of us have tasted food with a spoon, then put that spoon back in the pot. So, for the usage of the spoon, I'm going to give a bonus point to Christopher MacArthur Boyd. Well done, Christopher. <laughs> Life is worth living. Floating <laughs> island of garbage. Oh, there we go. That is our Claxon Joe is Biden, meaning it's all over. And at the end of the quiz, our winners this week are Josie Long and Christopher MacArthur Boyd! <laughs> The breaking the news, breaking news just in. Notre Dame Cathedral has been criticised for considering charging visitors a fee to enter. This has given some tourists the hump, but luckily, <laughs> if you've got one of them, they'll let you in for free. <laughs> <laughs> A collector with 4,000 bricks is hoping a museum will step in to take Britain's most bizarre haul off his hands. The good news is he has a great way to get the museum's attention. The bad news is he now owes them a new windy. <laughs> and the Skippenish oak in the Scottish Highlands, which could be 1,000 years old, has been named UK Tree of the Year. As with previous winners, the Skippenish oak was unable to collect the award because it's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Head on over to iPlayer to get all the entertainment scoop from Michelle McManus with her new show, The Entertainment Mix. And it's no easy job being a football manager sacked in the morning. Listen now on BBC Sounds. Banjo and his team are back in the Hebrides. Is it just me or does that look beautiful? Creating more incredible designs in the heart of island communities. Oh, I think I'm so <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. It's perfect. Designing the Hebrides. Press red for all episodes on BBC iPlayer. We do have some of the most dangerous terrain. Where is he? I don't think they're going to be... The dead body in the river. Suspicious day, same as you would get anywhere else. <laughs> Inside the UK's most unique police force, brand new Highland Cops continue Sunday at 9 on BBC Scotland and iPlayer. Friday night done and dusted. BBC Scotland is back tomorrow from 7 with Highland Cops, Scott Squad and much more. Until then, take care. I guess I give
Do it.